Hi friends, so today I'm going to record a video about the top programming languages which you can use in your career and uh, this is especially if you want to become a person who is skilled in software. Now as I've mentioned many times in many cases whether you are an engineering person, a business person or even a social scientist at the end of the day you will need to either create software or hardware. Now most of the jobs are actually in software because hardware is relatively less compared to software. So we will now discuss the top programming languages as of 2022 and then I will give you some references which you can use to check out the programming languages as they change. So number one on the list is Python and Python is a language which is very easy to learn for beginners and that's because it is essentially an English-like language. It's also rising at the cost of Java. So a few years ago, Java used to have the number one slot and now that's been ceded to Python. It's been growing for a long time since 2004, but many people still think of Python as a relatively young language or as a recent language. One of the reasons Python keeps getting more popular is that the libraries such as NumPy, Scikit-learn, PyTorch keep getting better. There are a plethora of things which you can do in Python now, which previously you needed MATLAB to do. So essentially these libraries are especially useful. You can do things like data science, stochastic gradient descent, and different methods using Python. So essentially the top fields in Python, I would say would be data science and machine learning. Now, one of the negative attributes of Python is that it is slow, but Again, it is good for programming, so you need to factor these two components and see which is more important for you. Number two on the list is C, and C has been an important language for a long time. It's the top language many years ago, and it's been one of the top languages since 85. Now, there used to be a com competition between Java and C but now Python has taken number one slot. It is a very fast and efficient languages and some of you who have programmed in C know that how you can deal with vectors and matrices using pointers and this is very fast in terms of memory and getting the numbers from the lists or vectors. Now, one of the reasons C is popular is in the applications which involve IoT or Internet of Things. Now in this particular technology, there are all these devices out there such as refrigerators, washing machines, cars, and so on. And all these essentially have certain sensors on them and these are all connected to the Internet. And so these have become like computer type of devices and C is the code which is often written in these particular devices. So these smart devices typically use C software and they require high performance and C is very fast and so you can get high performance from C. The next language number three in the list is Java and Java has been slowly losing ground to Python but it remains one of the top languages as far as Android applications are concerned and remember that most of the mobile phones in the world are powered by Android, despite the seeming popularity of Apple in some countries. As far as the world is concerned, the Android system remains the most popular. Java is also important for backend software development and also widely used in desktop computers, TVs, web browsers, Blu-ray player servers, etc. So Java remains strong if you are interested in something to do with the web or Android development apps and so on, then Java is the language to learn. Number four on the list is C++. Now C++ is something which has gone beyond C. And one of the reasons it remains popular is it is often taught in colleges to learn OOP programming. And essentially, if you know C, C++ is an easy language to learn, though some of the advanced features of this language are quite complicated. 
Now, where is C++ used? I would say it's used in gaming, microcontrollers, and the Internet of Things. And therefore, people who are in these professions, especially in gaming, would require to know C++. There is also considerable legacy code in C++. And therefore, you know, knowing C++ is always a positive fact for most people. And again, like I mentioned, a lot of the formal courses in college are still using C++ because a lot of programming concepts and concepts in data structures can be taught using C++. Number five on the list is C Sharp. And C Sharp is also used in web apps, mobile apps, game development, cloud-based services, and enterprise software. So these are some of the backend things which are happening a lot. And remember that cloud-based services remain important. Of course, game development remains important and so on. So specifically, if you are into any of these problems regarding web app development and mobile app development, then C Sharp is the way to go. Visual Basic. Visual Basic is at number six, and this is rather surprising. Now, Visual Basic was developed by Microsoft, and those of you who have done any kind of work with Excel, for example, would remember that you can write macros in Visual Basic. And many people do not realize that a large amount of data analysis can actually be done using the Excel spreadsheets and macros. And this is especially important, for example, in small businesses, sometime in finance field and so on. So before Python started becoming ubiquitous, Visual Basic was often used in many situations beyond the pure technology type of domains, especially in business and finance. And as far as small business is concerned, Visual Basic remains important. So one of the functions about Visual Basic is that you create macros and these macros can have inbuilt programs which can then do a lot of data manipulation stuff as far as Excel is concerned. Now, remember that though many people like to talk about Python and some of these things as far as data analysis is concerned, a huge amount of data is actually still in Excel spreadsheets and therefore using simple functions as far as Excel itself is concerned and then augmenting them using Visual Basic can be a good way to do various simpler data science type of problems, especially dealing with statistics and so on. Number seven is JavaScript and JavaScript has become popular because there are almost two billion websites in the world and 95% of these use JavaScript. So JavaScript can be used to add dynamic behavior to the web page. So very often when you see any kind of special effects on web page and so on, you will probably have JavaScript behind it. It's a key language for web page development. And again, the development of the Internet of Things is making JavaScript more popular. So this is again a language you can learn if you are interested in websites and their development. Number eight on the list is assembly language. And this is essentially a low level language and this is close to machine code. So it is somewhere between the higher level languages such as C, and the machine code. So this is human readable code, which is like machine code. Now, one of the reasons this is becoming popular is the Internet of Things. You want to do direct hardware manipulation, device drivers. You want to do embedded systems and real-time systems. So whenever the speed of your program is important, as in the case of real-time systems, you can choose C. And if you want even faster performance, you can choose the assembly language. Number nine on this list is SQL, and SQL is popular and remains popular because it can be used to query relational databases. So a large amount of information is often present in these type of databases, and SQL lets you communicate with these databases. So again, in many job profiles where you have to manipulate data, such as in data science, data Analysis, even in machine learning, SQL is often required. So SQL, the structured query language, remains very important as far as data manipulation is concerned. Number 10 in the list is PHP. And this is the scripting language which is embedded in HTML. It's used by companies such as Lyft and Splack, used to often build e-commerce sites, and also used in websites to generate web page content dynamically. 
So whenever you are dealing with server side of the web, PHP is a language, though it is less secure than Java, it remains a language worth learning in many cases for people who are into websites, e-commerce, and so on. Now, just to mention number 13 in this list is R. R is an important language as far as statistical computing is concerned. It can do many things in statistics. And uh, it's important in data mining and data science for some people who are taking a statistics perspective to this system. So there is a Python approach to this problem and there is a statistics approach to this problem. So many times you will see statisticians, people well-versed in statistical software will use R. One of the problems with R is that it is relatively slow and that of course is a problem. But Python is also slow, but R is much slower than Python. And one of the reasons or one of the things which has come up to address some of these causes or problems in R and Python is Julia. Julia still remains number 26 in the list, but I expect it will go up in the future years. So if I see 2025 or 2020, 30, I would expect Julia to be up. MATLAB is at number 20. MATLAB is very popular in the universities, but as I've mentioned in a previous video, if you leave universities, you will mostly see Python because Python essentially has plethora of libraries which are very similar to MATLAB. For example, if you take matplotlib or Seaborn, you can do a lot of the plotting which you do in MATLAB in Python today. Scratch is often used to teach programming languages to kids. This is a very specialized language which is useful for kids. COBOL used to be popular in mainframe, and so there is legacy systems and it remains popular there. And of course, Fortran still hangs around because a lot of the old code in terms of various national labs and so on has been written in Fortran. And so Fortran continues to be there. It's not a dinosaur, it's a living dinosaur. So that's a basic take on some of the programming languages. Depending on your proclivity, you can go for Python or Java or C or C++, some of the top languages. And if you want a niche, you can go at some of the other languages such as PHP, C Sharp, and so on. Remember, languages are somewhat like the actual languages. So for example, you may know English, which is similar to Python, but if you are in a part of the world where French is spoken, then of course, knowing French would be very useful. And similarly, if you are in a web type of system, Java would be very useful. If you are in systems where real-time computing is important, C would be very useful and so on. So keep that in mind. So that was my take on the top programming languages. You can find more information from this IOB website. These are the people who bring out these ranking and of course these keep changing every year. These are based on popularity of the languages. So keep that in mind also. It is not a judgment list about which language is superior and which is not. So I will end this video here and I will see you in a video sometime soon.